Hello my loves and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joy and I've got several Trump updates to go ahead and give you guys. Uh, the first one I wanna give you, and I know that you guys saw the title, so you saw it, is that we actually have video of when the gunman opened fire on Trump and the people at the rally. So I'm gonna show that for you. Just a warning, it's graphic, and I have other videos of him being shot down. So if you wanna look at any of those, again, warning, but you can see those. Um, I do want to give an update very quickly. Trump is doing very well. Um, from what we can tell, Biden has spoken with Trump. We'll get into more of that. Apparently, uh, we know the identification of the person who, uh, the spectator who is no longer with us. They are a firefighter in Pennsylvania and they were protecting their family, which is just absolutely devastating. We've also learned that this was supposed to be an even bigger operation as explosives and explosive materials have been found in the shooter's car. If you've seen my shorts, I had talked about how they actually evacuated his family home, the shooter. They evacuated that whole neighborhood because of bomb threats. So a lot going on, a lot to talk about. And if you guys want to be updated, make sure and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when stuff comes out and I can give you updates. Sorry about my appearance. This is supposed to be my day off. I just got out of the shower. I just did a three hour hike with my partner. Even though these are, you know, huge stories and I want to cover them, I also got to do stuff for my mental health and I like to go hike out in Phoenix Mountains. So anyway, I want to go ahead and again, I'm going to show you all this. It's really graphic. Um, so just warning to everybody and my hair will dry as we talk. So here we go. Donald Trump has survived an assassination attempt at a rally in Pennsylvania. Before we start this full hour with reports and analysis, let's first show you that moment Donald Trump was shot. Take a look at what happened. Oh. The FBI says the gunman who was on a nearby roof killed a spectator and wounded two others before being shot dead by snipers. Well, as you can see, security agents rushed to protect the former president. They later hurried him off stage with blood on his face. In a social media post, Mr. Trump said a bullet had pierced his ear. He's now in New Jersey, where he plans to spend the night at his private golf club. This image obtained by the entertainment news outlet TMZ shows the exact moment the shooter, who was lying on his stomach, lines up his shot from the roof, clearly questions about how he was able to do that without being stopped. The gunman was shot dead moments after this. What you're hearing is some of the reaction from the clearly very distressed crowd after he was killed and the panic which ensued. Well, speaking at the news conference, the FBI special agent Kevin Rojek gave this update. This evening we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. We do not currently have an identified motive although our investigators are working tirelessly to attempt to identify what that motive was. Well, speaking at the same press conference, Pennsylvania State Police Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens gave this update. So let me describe for you a little bit about the, uh, the scene that we have over there. As you know, uh, uh, you know, there was a grandstand, a very large area, a lot of people there when this all unfolded. The former president had uh, come out and begun to speak shortly after six o'clock this evening, excuse me, this evening. Uh, and within about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, a number of sounds were heard and it became apparent that shots were being fired um, in that direction. It was a chaotic scene. Uh, law enforcement, I believe, acted heroically, quickly identifying and, uh, and, and neutralizing the threat as well as responding to assist the various victims. There's more to this, guys, um, which a lot of people have been talking about. So apparently, people who have talked about being at Trump's rallies and being at several of them have said that there was something off about Trump's security. Um, I'm not saying directly his security, because I assume he has his own security and then he also has the uh, Secret Service, but that there was something off about how the security was. It wasn't as tight. Typically, it's a whole lot better, and it just seemed like things were lax. And it's really, really reminding a lot of people of what happened with JFK. And I'm telling you guys, like, this thing, this bullet grazed his ear, 
Had he been just a millimeter over, he would no longer be with us. Just horrifying. And an update that I want to talk about that's driving me nuts as well. And if you want to see a video, let me know. The left has been raging. The left on TikTok. I am pro I'm more prominent on TikTok. I've got around 650,000 followers. I get hundreds of millions of views a month. That's not even an exaggeration. I did 200 million a few months back. Um, but I have a hard time on that platform. It's not only so left-leaning, they are mean. So these younger lefties are, and I hate saying it that way because I don't, I'm not left or right, but I'm just gonna call it what it is. They are screaming and melting down saying we had one shot, you had a shot to get him and you didn't. All of our issues and worries could be over, but you didn't get him. Um, that's disgusting. And this is why people can't stand the left. And this is why Biden is not going to win no matter what, no matter who you put in the Democrats, they're not going to win because people are tired of it. People who really see through it and understand it. And I think most of the Americans watching, if nothing else, you're like, this doesn't look right. So I, I cannot understand the kind, tolerant, loving left who just wants tolerance for themselves, pushing violent rhetoric on people, but then calling everybody else the old German N word. I, in and then Atsi. I don't know what I can say on YouTube, but um, I do want to give you some updates. This is what President Biden had to say about what happened. Not very long, but I do think it's important. Um, he said that he spoke with Trump. So we'll take a look at that and we'll see exactly how that went down. Let's see, I have to scroll a little bit because it took a while for this to actually go down. Here we go. Covering, and we had a short but good conversation. Jill and I are keeping. Last night, I spoke with Donald Trump. I'm sincerely grateful that he's doing well and recovering. And we had a short but good conversation. Jill and I are keeping him and his family in our prayers. We also extend our deepest condolences to the family of the victim who was killed. He was a father. He was protecting his family from the bullets that were being fired. And he lost his life. God love him. We're also playing for the full recovery of those who were injured. And we're grateful to the Secret Service agents and other law enforcement agencies who, and individuals who risked their lives literally for our nation. As I said last night, there is no place in America for this kind of violence or any violence for that matter. An assassination attempt is contrary to everything we stand for as a, as a nation, everything. It's not who we are as a nation. It's not America. And we cannot allow this to happen. Unity is the most elusive goal of all, but nothing is important than that right now. Unity. We'll debate and we'll disagree. It's not, that's not going to change, but it's going to, we're going to not lose sight of fact who we are as Americans. Look, Vice President Harris and I were just briefed in the Situation Room by my Homeland Security team, including the director of the FBI, the Secretary of Homeland Security, the Attorney General, the Director of the Secret Service, my Homeland Security Advisor, the National Security Advisor, and we're going to continue to be briefed. The FBI is leading this investigation, which is still in its early stages. We don't yet have any information about the motive of the shooter. We know who he is. I urge everyone, everyone, please, don't make assumptions about his motives or his affiliations. Let the FBI do their job and their partner agencies do their job. I'm instructed that this investigation be thorough and swift, and the investigators will have every resource they need to get this done. Look, as this investigation continues, here's what we're going to do. First, Mr. Trump is a former president and nominee of the Republican Party, already receives a heightened level of security. And I've been consistent in my direction of the Secret Service to provide him with every resource, capability, and protective measure necessary to ensure his continued safety. Second, I've directed the head of the Secret Service to review all security measures for the all security measures for the Republican National Convention, which is scheduled to start tomorrow. And third, I've directed an independent review of the national security at yesterday's rally to assess exactly what happened. And we'll share the results of that independent review with the American people as well. And finally, I'll be speaking more about this tonight at greater length from the Oval Office. We must unite as one nation. We must unite as one nation to demonstrate who we are. 
And so may God bless you all and may God protect our troops. Thank you very much. Mr. President, when you spoke to President... So I do want to say... Um, he actually spoke, I, I've given him a lot of crap. We've left a lot on this channel about his gaffes, right? He spoke very well. Um, I like everything he said. I appreciate that he reached out to Trump because they have not been, I don't know if I'd say they haven't been super civil with each other, but they've been pretty heated going back and forth um, and saying he's going to step up security. So I do think that's good. Um, I will say, it. I wish, it, well, that's the other thing. He also had prompters. So he does a little bit better with prompters. He still sounds drunk. He still sounds drunk, but at least it sounds like he's trying his best to be helpful in this situation. But again, who knows what's really going on behind closed doors. I still feel like this is a situation where they've done everything they can to destroy this man. And now that the left is not only, I mean, not only is Biden not gonna win, the left is not gonna win. So if you can't beat him, take him out. And it feels like the elites at top, that's exactly what happened. I can't prove that. That's just what my gut and my senses and my critical thinking skills tell me at this point. Um, but there is another update we have that I want you to see on what's going on. So this is the Pennsylvania Governor Josh Sapiro, and he just gave updates on exactly what's going on as well. ABC News Special Report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good day, I'm David Muir. We're coming on the air because we're about to learn more from law enforcement and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro on the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump at that campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania last night. As we await them to approach these microphones, these are the images the world has now seen. The former president grazed with a bullet that pierced the upper... Every single day, and I'm on the road, Pennsylvania I'm Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, and I'm honored every single day to represent the good people of Pennsylvania. I'm honored to be here today in Butler Township, a wonderful community, a community where people love one another, respect one another. Unfortunately, last night had to deal with tragedy in their neighborhood. I've just come from a briefing with the FBI and the Pennsylvania State Police. And I'm joined today, of course, by Colonel Christopher Paris of the Pennsylvania State Police. Law enforcement will have more to share throughout the day. I'd like to make a few comments separate from the ongoing investigation. First and foremost, the assassination attempt on the former president, Donald Trump, last night was absolutely unacceptable and tragic. Lori and I are grateful that the former president is safe and, according to him and his team, is fine. It's also important to note that last night, three of our fellow Pennsylvanians were shot, one fatally and two in critical condition. I've just spent time speaking to the families and I wanna offer my prayers and the prayers of all 13 million Pennsylvanians for the two individuals who are being treated at this time. We lost a fellow Pennsylvanian last night, Corey, Comparator. I just spoke to Corey's wife and Corey's two daughters. Corey was a girl dad. Corey was a firefighter. Corey went to church every Sunday. Corey loved his community. And most especially, Corey loved his family. Corey was an avid supporter of the former president and was so excited to be there last night with him in the community. I asked Corey's wife if it would be okay for me to share that we spoke. She said yes. She also asked that I share with all of you that Corey died a hero. That Corey dove on his family to protect them last night at this rally. Corey was the very best of us. May his memory be a blessing. Last night was shocking for this community and for this Commonwealth, and I know for this country. Political disagreements can never, ever be addressed through violence. Disagreements are okay, but we need to use a peaceful political process to settle those differences. This is a moment 
where all leaders have a responsibility to speak and act with moral clarity, where all leaders need to take down the temperature and rise above the hateful rhetoric that exists and search for a better, brighter future for this nation. It's the work that I try to do every day here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And that's the work that falls to each and every American right now. And so I ask that you join me in prayer for the two Pennsylvanians who are in critical condition. That we continue to wish for a full and speedy recovery and pray for the former president. And that the Comprator family remains in our thoughts and prayers. They have some very challenging times ahead of them. They will have an empty seat at the dinner table for the rest of their lives. But we need to make sure that Corey's memory is forever a blessing. And here in Pennsylvania, we will see to it that that is the case. And with that, I'll be happy to try and take a few of your questions. Governor, a lot of folks are, are starting to ask the tough question about whether that building that the shooter access should have been secured. Should it have been secured? And do the Pennsylvania State Police have any responsibility to have secured it? I'm not going to get into any questions, regard, answer any questions regarding the ongoing investigation. Uh, I trust that the FBI and the Pennsylvania State Police uh, will keep you posted throughout the day and in the days ahead as to their investigation. Governor, there were some concerning items that the police had found in the suspect's vehicle. Uh, do you have any update on those? And are you confident at this point the threat is over, that he acted alone and that the public is in fact safe? The investigation is ongoing and law enforcement will update you on the status of their investigation throughout the day. Can you share any more about your communications with former President Donald Trump or his team? I have not spoken directly to the former president. I have wished him well. Um, I think multiple times last evening through statements, Lori and I have. Um, the people of Pennsylvania, I know, were praying for him. And again, according to his team uh, and himself, it seems as though he will be fine, obviously, relatively speaking. Uh, and we're glad to see that violence uh, is never acceptable. I should also let you know that I did speak to President Biden. He called me last night uh, to make sure that here in the Commonwealth we had all the resources we needed. I assured him that we did. Uh, at the time, he had yet to speak to President Trump. I think they connected later in the evening, and he wanted me to know that he was trying to reach out uh, to the uh, former president. Um, I think that that was the honorable and right thing to do, and I'm, I'm glad that President Biden did that. Uh, we have no unmet needs at this time, and we're working in concert with our federal partners, and I let the president know that. Governor, have you talked to the families of those two who were critically injured, and do you have an update on their condition? I spoke to the family of one of them, and the other um, left a detailed message, and I'm not going to get into their status. That will be shared by the Pennsylvania State Police and or the family later today. Governor, were you be asking for class to be from the past staff across the state, and also knowing that this is going to be a really contentious, even more so, a battleground state for the rest of what would your message Can I, say, I just missed the last part of what you said. No problem. Uh, the first was about the flags. The second, knowing that this is going to be even more contentious now in the state of Pennsylvania and that we're divided here, what is your message to people who live here? I have directed that flags be flown at half staff in Corey's memory, and uh, our chief of staff is working through that process now. My message to all Pennsylvanians, my message to all Americans is to be firm in your beliefs, uh, to believe what you believe, to advocate for what you believe, and to be engaged in the political and civic process, but to always do so peacefully, to remember that while we may be Democrats or Republicans, above all else, we are Americans. And if you look at the story of this great nation over the last 248 years, a nation that was born right here in Pennsylvania, it's been ordinary Americans at every single step right. of the way. So there's not a whole lot more left um, for that, but I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the updates and give you the new video angle so you could see what happened. So it looks like, however you look at it, um, for whatever reason, the security secret service, whoever it was, was not, um, didn't have anything to do with securing that building. And this man was able to shimmy up it or something and get up there 
And uh, the crowd, there were crowds there who saw it and they were alerting people and police and trying to get help as they were watching this unfold. And nobody acted until it was too late. Um, it's just really hard. I have a lot of thoughts on this. I kind of want to wait to see what comes out. I wonder if this is just somebody who is an extreme leftist incel. Um, I kind of feel like politically there are two types of incels um, that I have seen. The ones on the far right seem to be more, or just on the right in general, seem to be more self-aware of the fact they're incels. The ones on the left um, that I have seen, um, many times they don't really admit that that's what's happening, but they, many times they're very smart but they're the kind of smart where they went through school and it was, you do your work and you you get good grades and everything gets handed to you. And then you get in the real world, that doesn't happen. And then they can't find a girlfriend. And when they do try to find a girlfriend or they will just befriend women and have all these leftist ideals, not because they even believe in them, but because they think that will be the thing that gets them to be able to have women. And then it doesn't. And you have to be careful of those types. Those types many times because they are not self-regulated, they tend to blow up with their emotions. And that's something I've just learned as a woman over time, being in the dating world, dealing in society. So, um, so that's the information updates I have. If you want more updates, make sure and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, let me know what you think. Um, like the videos, all of that helps so I can spread awareness and information. And I just want to thank you guys for being with me and um, allowing me to do what I do on YouTube. And I'm sending everybody, the the victims, the victims' families. I just, it's really hard to hear about that firefighter. That's really tough. And I'm just glad Trump is okay. And I'm praying for everybody. And I'm praying for you guys too.